Damn. That was intense. Hey guys, it's Kevin again, and this is going to be another movie to continue my 31 days of horror movie reviews, and holy shit, I mean, this movie, just wow, I've wanted to see it for so long, um, honestly, I've wanted to see this movie for a very long time, and I kept putting it off, and I don't know why, I was gonna watch it last year, didn't, I'm gonna watch it for classic horror movie reviews this year, didn't, and I figured I'd watch it for 31 days of horror movie reviews, and I did, and thank god I did, because... I want to see it for so long. That is the 2004 psychological thriller horror classic Saw. I really feel this movie is going to be a classic. It might not be now, but I do think it's going to be a classic, um, you know, in the coming years. Saw is a movie I want to see for so long. I've heard amazing things about it. I've heard it is a fantastic movie, and I've really wanted to see it, obviously. And thank God I finally saw it because Saw is exactly what I wanted it to be. It is by far one of the most terrifying and intense movies I've seen so far for 31 Days of Horror. And it has one of the most shocking twists, I think, of all time. I absolutely love this movie. It's an absolute masterpiece, and I really love Saw. And sure, it might have some small issues here and there, but it really didn't bother me because I love this movie as much as I did. Now, the plot to Saw is very vague, and I'm sure you guys know some of the stuff about Saw because, you know, Saw is a huge movie. But thing is, this is a movie where I don't really want to reveal a lot to you guys. Um, basically, all I can say without spoiling anything is that the movie is about these two men. They're trapped in this room. They don't know why, and there is this puppet that basically is asking them if they want to play a game. And throughout playing these this game that they're in by this puppet, they start to find out a lot more about what's going on with them and that's really and why they may be in this room, why they were kidnapped, things like that. And that basically is all I can say about Saw. Um now I will not be reviewing Saw 2, Saw 3. I heard they were all shit. Like I heard all the other sequels are terrible. I'm not even gonna bother to watch them. I'm probably never gonna watch them because I really feel this is the only movie you need to watch, honestly. And I understand, like, of course, the movie made tons of money and things like that. I, I can understand why they made other sequels, but I'm not going to talk about them at all because I think this movie stands out fine on its own. Um, there's so much to love about this movie. First of all, I was not expecting much from the acting in this movie. I was expecting it to be really cheesy, really over the top, and it's really not. In fact, I found it very subdued at points. I found a lot of the acting very subdued, and I found a lot of the acting very surprising, sp um, particularly from Carrie... Il um, Ilwis, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing his name wrong, but Carrie Ilwis as uh, Dr. Lawrence Gordon, our main character, he was phenomenal in this movie. I thought he was amazing, honestly. The thing about Lawrence that the second we are introduced to his character, um, you're not thinking he's going to be the main character. You know, you can tell that he is more familiar with what's going on. You don't exactly know why he's... Um, you know, he, the second we meet him, you know, you, you can just tell that he's not as surprised that he's trapped in this room, and he seems like he's been here before. And his character, there's a lot that's going on there, and I found it very interesting, definitely. His character is very fascinating. He is a police detective, we eventually find out, and there is this, like, mur there's a, this murder case going on that he was involved in, and it's just as interesting as the main storyline. And all the flashbacks with his character really bring his character full circle, and I really think he did an amazing job. He had some amazing freakout scenes as well. What I love about his character, though, that he was never too over the top. In fact, he I think the thing I loved about his acting so much is that he waited till I'd say the end of the movie to really go full on crazy. You know, the whole movie he obviously is kind of holding back. You feel like he's kind of holding back some emotional layers and it takes a while for him to revisit things he might not have wanted to revisit and then eventually he starts to go a little bat bat batshit crazy and I think he really did an amazing job. He was fantastic in this movie and uh, really was one of the big standouts here. Now Lee Winnell is Adam. Um, you think he's gonna be the main character. You think he's gonna be the main character. He's the first character introduced to in this movie and he's not the main character. I'm gonna say it right now. He's one of the main characters but he's not the main character. Lawrence is. But I thought he was just as interesting as uh, Lawrence because we don't know anything about Adam. He's a character that we're finding all this information about Lawrence and we know nothing about Adam. And eventually, there's a huge twist that's revealed that I absolutely love with this character that I can't tell you guys about. But I thought Lee Winnell was just great as the complete opposite of Lawrence. You know, he's completely confused. He doesn't know what's going on. He's as lost as the viewer is. And I thought these two men as a whole really drove this movie very, very well, I have to say. Both of them were amazing. Um... Tobin Bell is also fantastic in this movie, but I can't tell you why he's fantastic. Um, if you guys have seen the movie, you know why, but if you haven't, I can't really say much about him. Danny Glover, I thought, was great as David Tapp, who is uh, Lawrence's... Um he he is one of he is one of Lawrence's uh, um, assistants. Basically, he's a detective that is inspecting. You know, that is uh, trying to. 
basically he starts to accuse Lawrence and Lawrence is a doctor he's not he's not a uh, he's not a detective but um David is a detective and just the whole thing that was going on with his character I found very interesting as well he definitely did a very good job Monica Potter as Allison uh Lawrence's wife is also a very fascinating character as is Michael Emerson as Zepp who uh you start to find you know you start to find out more about his character as well I really found everyone in this movie fantastic I, I would love to talk about the other actors in this movie but they really all are fantastic and I also really love Shawnee Smith as Amanda who really has nothing to do in this movie besides one scene but it's one of the most effective scenes in the movie because she's one of the only people that has been able to beat Billy the Puppet and been able to defeat, you know, um, defeat Jigsaw, the, defeat Jigsaw, the, uh, the killer Jigsaw, and, uh, I thought her character as a whole was very interesting. I definitely really loved her, I have to say. And she is by far one of the most terrifying scenes in the movie, definitely. She is fantastic in this movie. I really thought she was amazing. Um, but overall, I thought all the acting was amazing, and everyone really did a great job. But let's talk about James Wan here, who is definitely, I think, one of the masters of horror working today. Sure, he may, might not do horror movies anymore, but you can tell why he is regarded as such a great um, horror movie director. This and Insidious are both perfect. What I love about his movies is that he never does, like, false jumps scares he never does anything just for shock value he has a, a driven story throughout it and this is a movie where he forces you to pay attention i really love about his character about his directing his directing was just fantastic in this movie the way the tone of this movie is very mysterious this is actually a bit of a mystery i'd say um for like the first half of the movie and i thought he definitely did a very good job with that um and also the for opening scene of this movie is i think one of the best opening scenes i've seen in a horror movie in a while it's such a great opening scene, and I think James Wan really directed this to perfection and really was uh, fantastic in terms of directing. He really, um, really was fantastic, I have to say. I definitely was very impressed by his directing. Uh, but the screenplay by Lee Winnell is absolutely phenomenal. I thought the screenplay was so surprising, and I did not see anything in this movie coming at all. It's such a simple concept, and but there, but then you start to realize, you know, as the movie goes on, there's so much more behind it than just this little simple concept that you thought of. And I love how the movie reveals little details here and there that don't seem like a big deal, but eventually is a big deal. I love movies like that because, you know, you could watch something in this movie and be like, why does this really matter? And then you're like, oh, that's why that matters. And that I thought was great. Now, the real horror of this movie, I don't think is just, like, the torture and things like that. It's the pure concept of this movie, and really what this movie is trying to do. And eventually, when you realize what's going on, it really is a horror movie. I mean, picture this guy who's traps you in, you know, there's someone, some, someone you're trapped in this room, you're, you're forced to do some really disgusting things, and just the way that Jigsaw carries out his plans, it's, it's very interesting, and I definitely really love that, I have to say. Um, but this movie really isn't that graphic, I think, in terms of macabre violence. There is some pretty scary, gruesome stuff in this movie, but it's nowhere near as gruesome as I thought it was going to be because it's mainly focused on the story in this movie. It's mainly focused on the mystery, and that's something I was very impressed by. I was expecting it to go full-on just really disgusting, and it really isn't, I'd say, to the last 20 minutes. The last 20 minutes are pretty terrifying, I will say that. The last 20 minutes are really terrifying and really scary, but it wasn't really um, as terror, you know, as uh, as disgusting throughout the movie. It's much more of a psychological scary. I mean, just knowing what these characters have gone through is very well done, and I definitely really loved seeing what these characters have gone through. And I thought their storylines were very interesting because of that, and that's the reason why I loved it as uh, much as I did. Really, I think that's another that is because of how great the screenplay was. It's a very compelling story. Um, the cinematography is just amazing this movie. Every shot looks fantastic. It looks terrifying. It looks beautiful at the same time. Just the room that they're trapped in, I mean, it's it's a very visually striking movie, and it just, it looks fantastic. All the visuals are great, and that's something that James Wan always has done well, is, is his visuals, and this is by far one of the most visually striking movies I've watched so far for 31 Days of Horror. It just looked amazing, and I absolutely loved uh, the cinematography in this movie. Really, it looks fantastic. The score was so um, menacing and so dark and brutal, and I absolutely loved the score of this movie. I thought it was really, really great. And the editing as well, the movie is perfectly paced. I really found the movie perfectly paced. I was into it the whole time. There's not one point where I wasn't into this movie, and I thought the movie was just great. And now I really want to talk about spoilers, because I can't talk about this movie and how much I loved it without getting into spoilers. So if you guys have not seen Saw, don't watch the rest of this review, okay? Saw is one of those movies where you need to know go, go into it knowing nothing. I knew nothing going into this 
movie. I really didn't. I knew about, of course, the killer jigsaw, and I knew something that happened, but on a, other than that, I really knew nothing. The only thing I knew going into this movie is that the character Jigsaw has cancer. That's all I knew going into this movie. Um, and of course, that he tortures people. What this movie does, I think, is so well done because it, it you know, essentially leads you to believe that Adam is going to be the villain of this movie, that Adam is the person that's trapped Lawrence here, and that he is completely against Lawrence for having an affair um, with, you know, one of his students. I think that definitely is very interesting, and especially the scene. I also, by the way, I gotta say, I didn't say it's my review because I feel it's a spoiler, the, the, when we find out that, you know, his daughter and wife were also abducted, this really gets us to care about Lawrence a lot more, and that's something I realized about his character. But then when you found out he has this affair with uh, this student, I like the way they handle it. They don't handle it as, like, us hating Lawrence. They don't make us hate Lawrence by any means. In fact, what they do is they make us sympathize him more, because this is a man that has made some bad decisions, and he knows he's made some bad decisions, but he really regrets every bad thing that he's done and really feels bad about it, and I think that really makes us sympathize with his character more, and I really love that, I have to say. I mean, he's done some pretty bad things in his life. You know, he's had sex with this, uh, he, he clearly had an affair with this girl, but he's never never, it doesn't seem like his wife knows about it, you know, we, well, we're led to believe at least that his wife doesn't know about it, and he claims that it wasn't an affair, and that he really loves his wife, and he feels really bad about it, and I thought that was definitely, um, very interesting, and, uh, you know, when we realized that it wasn't Adam that, uh, you know, was, it was actually John this whole time, John, the person that was dead on the floor, the whole movie that we're led to believe is dead, um, is actually the person that is, you know, kidnapped Lawrence, I think was fantastic the way they did that. And then when we realized that the reason John's after Lawrence is because he diagnosed, Lor you know, John with cancer, I think that's very interesting as well. It just gives us a way to connect all these characters together, and Adam was kind of John's right-hand man. But it didn't work out well for Adam because his plan completely failed and John was just like, all right, I'll do the dirty work myself because Adam just couldn't bring himself to kill Lawrence. He saw how, you know, how, how upset Lawrence was and how, I think just the regret that Lawrence had. Lawrence had a lot of regret. He didn't want to die. He begged for his life and Adam just couldn't let him die because he's human. I mean, imagine if you were told to just kill someone while you're trapped in this room. You probably not know what to do, and especially when Lawrence was going crazy. Adam really didn't know how to handle it. You know, when Adam, when Lawrence was, when Lawrence cut off his foot, I knew it was going to happen. By the way, don't look at the poster of this movie because it's very, uh, very much of a spoiler. I'm not, I'm not happy about the poster at all because it really does spoil a very important part of the movie, but, um, you know, the poster spoils that, but other than that, you know, I think that was very well done. That's something I definitely really enjoyed. And then, of course, when we realize that John was the one that, um, you know, was the person that was dead all along, he was basically dead to trick Adam and Lawrence into thinking he died. And I think Adam knew he was al alive all along. I'm thinking that he did. I don't know if Adam knew that he was dead. I'm not sure. Um, we're led to believe that he, I think, did know. I'm not really sure, but... um. We get so much information from John in just those few minutes, but it's so interesting because it, you, you understand what he's doing. I mean, he obviously is crazy, and he did attempt suicide. Um, you know, he, he did, of course, attempt suicide, but then, of course, he was diagnosed with cancer, and you think that, you know, they thought he supposedly died from it, but he didn't die, and that's what I think makes his character uh, very, very interesting, and I really love that. And, uh... That's something I definitely really love. Now, we do find out that Adam was a photographer hired by the detective to follow the man he suspected being the killer. You know, because he thought that Lawrence um, was the killer, and uh, that's basically what was going on. You know, I, th I was thinking he was uh, David, you know, John's right-hand man. But no, he was actually, after Lawrence, he thought that Lawrence was the killer, and I think that definitely was very interesting, only to find out that the man that was dead on the ground was actually a killer. It's very fascinating the way that was done, and I absolutely love that. And those last 15 minutes are just so brutal. I had no idea it was going to happen. I thought he was just going to kill both of them. But no, he lets Lawrence live, and I'm not really sure why John let Lawrence live. I think it's because maybe John, I think it was, like I said, the regret and things like that. I don't really know um, why, but for whatever reason, he did let Lawrence live, and I thought that was definitely very interesting that we found that out, 
Um, but overall, guys, I saw, the, and then the ending where John just leaves Adam to die, it's just, it's truly terrifying. It's terrifying to think about. It's terrifying that he's going to probably just torture him and leave him dead, and he's not going to help him at all. It's just, it, it's terrifying. I think John sees Lawrence as someone that can help him, and Adam, he just, he's too unstable to uh to help him out and Lawrence does want he is gonna have help him and basically I, I believe in the second one he does have Lawrence help him I'm not really sure but also Amanda I think becomes a much bigger part of the story as well but other than that guy Saw is I think a classic I think it's an amazing movie it's a movie that I think everyone really does need to see at some point I absolutely loved um pretty much every minute of Saw it's a movie that is it's it's just it's very shocking you guys will definitely be very shocked right now I'm definitely gonna give Saw a five out of five or an A plus I found this movie to be a masterpiece I found it very shocking and truly truly something that I will not forget definitely but that is my review of Saw. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you guys saw this movie. You have seen it. I absolutely love this movie. I mean, this movie is just fantastic. And I will see you guys in my next video, which will be, I know, I know I didn't get to review The Nick yet, but it will be for tonight's episode, for, uh, for my review of uh, The Nick, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.